Here's a Philco Ford model R90. It's a reproduction of a Philco Baby Grand. They say uh, circa 1930 to 1936 on the label there. It's not really an exact replica of any specific uh, Philco tombstone. It's just kind of in that general style. There was a couple of similar, you know, radios built in the uh, 1970s and 80s, made to look like the uh, 1930s tombstones. The set is reasonably well made, and it uh, performs fairly well. The only thing I've done with this one is uh, repair the tuning mechanism. It has a friction drive mechanism cut. The only thing I've done to this set is repair the tuning mechanism. The uh, tuner uses a friction drive. There's a little rubber wheel attached to the uh, you know shaft here, and that used to you know run across a foam strip on the inside of this uh, dial drum. That foam disintegrated. And I uh, replaced that with a piece of felt, and that works pretty well. You can see it moves smoothly. All right, let's hear it play. Set to uh, FM AFC right now. There's a tone control down here. Remember to download the free iHeartRadio. Tickets at Broadway in Binghamton.com. Sensitivity on FM is pretty good. Six pack classic rock rides all day. Testosterone levels with testosterone, a patented key ingredient. <laughs> Nobel Prize. You can see it picks up stations all the way across the dial. You can also turn off AFC if you want. I don't think it works better with it on though. Yeah, it's set to AM now. I can't skip over 680. If these statements describe you and you've been diagnosed with gastroparesis, I'm recording this video around noon, so this is pretty much the worst time for uh, AM radio. But stuff is coming through. There's no check valve in that line. We're not talking about that. I'm talking about within the valve. Kind of weird to hear Red Hot Chili Peppers on AM radio. I like that band though. Why do you want him shooting a least a less efficient shot that often? Well, if you become more efficient from the late morning into the evening hours at this early vantage point. The cabinet is actually mostly made out of real wood, which is nice. It's not wood grain. Although this is like a kind of, you know, painted detail over uh, cheap plywood. I'm not sure where this set was actually made. It's not really marked anywhere. The sticker says printed in USA, but I'm pretty doubtful that the actual radio itself was made in the USA. The um, front of the radio is made out of particle board, as you can see. Cutting all this fancy molding would have been too expensive. And this is a plastic piece, I believe. A little plaque there is metal, though. I'll uh, take off the back cover and show you guys the inside.
Here you can see the uh, guts of the radio. I do have all the screws for the back. I had just left two of them out so I could more easily remove it. The uh, circuit board was made in Taiwan. It's nicely stamped there. It says run number one, so I guess this was a fairly early one. Looks like this actually went through some rounds of quality control, which is kind of interesting. The sticker there says final buy off, and I see four stamps in there. It's got a Japanese 12 ohm speaker. I've got it unplugged, so don't worry. You can see there is a exposed high voltage there, though. If you were to be sticking your fingers in here when it's on, that's live right there. This is the power supply board. I was having some intermittency on FM with this thing. Uh, it did cooperate okay for the video, though. I'm planning on, well, I'm probably going to sell this thing. It just takes up a lot of space and doesn't really fit with the rest of what I got. But um, FM may not be working when it arrives because of that. You'll have to figure out where there's a loose connection. You, the future buyer, that is. Well, thanks for watching.